right. Welcome to this episode of the Sake of Joe. I'm your host, and this is the co-host, Joe. Hi. The technology, horrible terrorist attacks that happened in Paris yesterday. Joe, if you'd like to explain. Right, so yesterday it happened around, I think it was 4 or 5 Eastern time, so it would have been 10 or 11. Yeah, 10 or 11 in Paris. So there were a couple different incidents. Uh, one, I believe, was at a large soccer game between uh, Germany and France. And there was another incident at a concert venue and uh, one at a restaurant. And there might there was probably one or two more. And so what happened was at the... I believe the large, uh, Soccer game was some sort of an explosion, or explosions went on, and they evacuated the game, I believe, and the concert. I believe that's where the uh, hostage situation was. Yeah, concert. So right now, we want to take and have a moment of silence. Uh, if you all you viewers can possibly do this, uh, right please. for uh, for the uh, hundred plus people killed. Yeah, and please, the countless injured. Let's have a moment of silence uh, starting now. Again, it was a very unfortunate situation that occurred in Paris. Less than... Or, Less than 48 hours ago, when at the time that we're recording this, it was, you know, ICE did claim responsibility for it, and, you know, that's just plain and simple brutality, and it's just not right. Right. Uh, so, our th- our, all of our thoughts and prayers right now go to the French people, and from now... For the at least the foreseeable next couple of weeks, we'll on all of our recordings we will ha- have the French flag in the bottom right hand corner. Yep. So, anyways, um, now onto a more positive note. Um, new images of the three ninety. Yep. Uh, the three. <laughs> Surprisingly, there are opening compartments. They're finally stepping up to their game. Right, now, and I don't know it was if, a Norscott designed piece to begin with. I, I wonder if Diecast Masters made some modifications. Yeah, and there's also news that the 390 will be delayed until January 2016 because the CAT team uh, just dropped a last minute request to Diecast Masters adding that they put a couple more extra details onto it. Which is nothing major, to be honest. I mean, let's face it, January 2016 isn't that far off anyways. Right, it's just a couple months. Exactly, and the fact that um, the fact that it's coming out January 2016 is really fast, actually. And I, that makes me wonder when the backos are going to be released. Yeah. <laughs> An addition by Diecast Masters themselves. That I don't think anyone knows unless they actually worked at Diecast Masters or Norscott. Yeah, so you know we will probably never know, but you but there's a quite a bit of more exciting news out there, including the fact that WSI has teamed up with Sword and they're going to be re-releasing some of the old Sword products, including. Boys, and they'll also have just three seventy nine tracks. 
say, I guess this though, over the last number of weeks and months, we've seen a large uh, market for sword low boys, haven't we? Oh yeah. And people are willing to pay ridiculous prices for them. I was about to, too. About a, two weeks ago, I was willing to pay $400 for one. But now they're re-releasing them at, a, at an amazing price. Yep. What would that price be, anyways? Either way, it's going to be a lot cheaper, and I think and the 379 tractor itself is going for like 100 something, right? Yeah, I think it was a hundred, a hundred and twenty. Yeah, it's 120 for a tractor and 229 for truck and trailer combos. Which is not bad at all. For the uh, that's for the limited production color ones, and standard variations are two nineteen. Yeah, but that's not really bad at all either. Yeah. Oh, by the way, guys, I forgot to throw in at the beginning of the video. Over the last couple of episodes of the Kevin Show, you've noticed some audio issues. That is not our fault. That's actually falls on the shoulders of YouTube and some processing errors. And it's not just happened to us. We thought it was just our recording system messing up. Actually, in reality, it's YouTube having processing issues, so that's yeah. not on our shoulders. It's on. Theirs. I see a lot of uh, reviews that I upload in the corner. Uh, YouTube keeps on telling me that there is going to be audio processing issues, but I haven't noticed anything. I guess the gremlins are just showing up now. So really, guys, if you'll just bear through the issues and the breakups, you know, it'd be greatly appreciated. Honestly, we are. We uh, have no control over it, so, you know, just bear with us, and if it makes a weird noise and whatever, we do apologize. It is not our fault necessarily, but it is our content, so we do feel obligated to say that, and we do apologize for any issues beforehand. Also, at first I really thought it was mine because we're having some teething, we've had some teething issues with the new laptops and the new uh, soft or the new hardware, and also this new software update for the recording device. We've had a couple teething issues. I mean, my headset is pretty much... Well, actually, there's nothing wrong with the headset, I guess, now, if the issues are not coming from the headset itself. So, um, But yeah, we have had our fair share of teething issues, haven't we? Yep. Every new car has a couple issues or whatever. And that's yeah. kind of that's yeah. kind of what it is with this. So. Yeah, we're just kind of fine tuning the uh, bugs out of things. Yes, and it we've perfected the old computer and technology. It took us about a year to get it perfected, didn't it? Yeah, I think the adjustment to this one should be much faster, though. Expe it, yeah, and it has to be a lot faster considering we got the twenty-four hour live stream in almost a month's time. Oh yeah. Actually, I'm going to check the exact timing right now since I have the right. countdown on my phone. And it seems this website kept trying to delete itself off my phone, but we are just four weeks, six days, and 14 hours away. Oh, nice. To the second, by the way, might I say. Yep. So we are now 34 days away. Oh, boy. So we are getting, we're getting really close. It's getting close to crunch time. Yep. So anyway, uh, the WSI Global have a couple of libraries that they're going to produce, and to me, they're not super appealing. But to others, they're probably going to be really appealing. They have Rich's Towing, Peterbilt three seventy nine, Rogers four axle, all crane, all crane, three axle low boy. Yep. And then Superior, Superior, which is just the tractor itself. And then there's a bunch of premium stuff, which those are, I believe those are just the standard colors. So there's a three axle in red. Uh, there's just the red tractor, the four axle in blue, and the tractor in blue. Now, here's the thing. I think the one I'm going to get, actually, I know the one I'm going to get is the one in blue. Yeah, and it appears they're re-releasing the uh, Brenner tanker trailer and the uh, East Dump. I would love to in a get a box the, trailer. I would not mind getting the tanker trailer either because they're what they use to uh, transport lime in, right? Uh, maybe. Well, I think I, those would be. I think that would be a dry bulk tanker, though. Uh, probably, but uh, 
for the dio coming up, I'm gonna need something yeah. to transport the lime into the site. So, you know, yeah. And, and God, I gotta mention this: the silver three sixty five. All right. You want you want to get the details? Well, you're the one that knows the details on that one. I was trying to do like what you do with Skype. You know, silver. Silver. All right. So. As you guys know, or should know, if you watched any of our videos over the last week, you should know that we have Sal, or 328 DLCR, repainting a 365 in reflective silver for us. And as far as I know, it's in the stripping process right now. And so it's already been taken apart, and it's in the stripping process, I do believe. Um, so pretty much what is going to happen is when I get it back, I'm going to take a bunch of pictures of it. I'm going to idolize it because it's a silver <laughs> 365 that um, is built for model news, which is sweet by the way. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. What else? Uh, and we're going to be giving it away during the 24 hour live stream. Oh yeah. Which explains the background. The white logos are the, for the run up to the 24 itself. Thanks, Joe. No problem. So remember to use hashtag road to 24 on Instagram. And actually, right before the 24, if you use it, um, it will show up. And I will be blindfolded. And I will select an image at random to, and we'll give away a shirt. So literally, I will just, you know, have my phone hand to me. And I'll select a random image. And the person who posted that image will actually get the T-shirt. Yeah, but uh, actually, I think we should actually say Model News Road to 24, because Road to 24, there's a bunch of random crap on there. Okay, Model News Road to 24, fuck. Yeah, so anyone that has Road to 24, hashtag Road to 24 right now, please edit it so it says hashtag Model News Road to 24. And also use hashtag Ronda Rousey. I'm um, not going to question that. It's a bad idea, too. No, I'm kidding. Um... I don't watch UFC, so... No. No. But anyways, um, also, be sure to go to modelnews101.com. Don't use spray paint. My name is Ned, and I served in Nam. I am from South Park. I wonder if that actually does sound like Ned from South Park. Oh, I thought you were talking about the uh, commercial where the person has a hole in their neck. Don't use spray paint. All right. I smoker, but now I have a hole in my throat. Does that actually sound pretty spot on? Yeah. All right. Holy all right. fuck! Yes! Oh, did I mention there's language in this, by the way, guys? Sorry. If I did not mention that before, there is language and shit and shite and shit and shite and sh Did you even put the slide in the beginning of the video? No, I did not. Oops. Recording thing. Okay. Again, guys, we're having some teething issues, but anyways, um, hopefully you guys, yeah. you guys are just fine. So, my only uh, disappointment with the USI uh, sword and TWS truck uh, lineup is, well, I think WSI only really has the agreement with Packard at the moment, so that means no granite. Yes, that is definitely going to be, well, interesting. So, um... Yeah, because the only people that have the granite, well, let's just say they bought all the ones on the market, and they're trying to price gouge them. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, guys, I forgot to mention, be sure to add me on Snapchat. Uh, it's K. Rollins photo, exactly how it sounds. Uh, there's some funny shit on there. Joe doesn't know because he doesn't have a Snapchat. So. Okay. But there's some funny shit on there. So, you know what? It's going to get better, too. I've been busy, but you get to go with me to sites and see shit and watch me urinate on a crane. Uh, I'm kidding about that one. I'm kidding about that. Unless, you know, there is the demand for it, but still. 
Okay. Now, I'm still going to urinate on the crane. I'm just not going to have a camera. Uh... Well, what a man's got to pee. A man's got to pee, so... Okay. Okay. Uh, well, guys, by the way, um, Caterpillar finally added the 325F to the uh, to their website. Mm-hmm. Took enough time. Yeah. Certainly did, but you know what? It looks cool. There's not many images out there of it because not many people own it because it's a very expensive machine. Yeah. And I just finally seen a 328 for the first time in a long, first time ever, I should say. So anyway, uh, first gear, they're doing 134th scale International Pro Stars with a lead wide tail uh, tr- trailer and Komatsu decaling and just plain white as well. And they're $74 and supposed to be released in January or February 2016. Nothing to say there. You know, if I don't know why, but it seems like the wait times for models is get a lot less these days. Well, I mean, you have rapid prototyping, and you know things are a lot easier. So, and dipshits running these some of these places. I don't know, but seriously, first gear. I don't know why. It's just like they're only they're only really doing models that a lot of people won't be interested in. Yes, hate true. to say it, but that's just the way things are. It seems that is a legit point. I mean, a lot of their models people don't buy. Yeah. Just put it in retrospect. I personally, I have a couple first gear models. Nothing too big. I got a couple Mac dump. Well, I actually have one dump truck in my entire collection. Now, it's not like I wouldn't buy more. Yeah. It's just like a matter of finding the granite dump. It's just more difficult since they discontinued it years ago. Yeah, and I feel lucky to have the Mac granite. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the at, the day after I got my Macarena dump, I got, like, a bajillion requests to buy, no, to sell or trade it because people couldn't find them. Yeah, I can see that, too. Um... Oh, and a funny story is, like, someone that asked me the day after I bought it. Well, let's just say they asked me, two, like, a year or two later, and they're like, hey... Will you still sell it? I'm like, no. No, go fuck yourself. I, what did I tell you? Two days ago? Right, go on, get your mama don't love you no more. Uh, well, I mean, I feel that, like, first gear, they're just really picking favorites with the scales. I mean, they're really serving 164th and 134th moment. That's true. There has been a couple 150th scale stuff, but nothing really to our liking. Yeah, I mean... And the the biggest movement for first gear to produce a model in a long time was a one fiftieth scale Mac R six hundred. There was like there were so many people that wanted it, and then it just turns out the first gear just said no, and then just decided to churn out like a bajillion libraries of the one sixty fourth scale version. Honestly, the the Mac Granite was probably one of the best things they ever built. Yeah, I mean, you look at was it the three sixty seven. Uh, the hinges on the doors uh, just fly open, and there's no steering front end. It's just, like, all plastic axle. And now, hold on. I got to say this, though. Every model has its problems, even sword models, especially the Peter yeah. builds. Because if you turn the wheels too far one way or another, the po- hood's going to pop open. Yeah. And that's a consistent problem with them. It always has been. Yeah. But there's not we can do about it, though. I'm thinking about actually getting the one of the T800s because I need another dump truck for right, what uh, you mean the T880? What whatever, fuck yeah. it. Yeah. Guys, it's 1 a.m. So Hey. Anyway, I mean the T880, I look at that and then I look at the picture of the granite and I'm like what? The doors don't open, really? Yes, exactly. I mean, I think maybe they're just trying to like rush models to market these days. A lot of people are though, like you, because here's the here's how marketing really works. If you announce something, you try to get it out as quick as you can, to, because that is still up there for it. Yeah, and a lot of companies are probably rushing things out for the last quarter of 2015 and early first quarter of 2016 because it was well, still the holiday season and people buy things. Oh, I'm waiting for the three reasons boys Black Friday sale. 
Yeah, I mean, Diecast Models Co is really is starting already. So I mean, I think they're a good baseline. I think we try and uh, compete with them. Honestly, I don't buy from Diecast Models yeah. Co. For obvious for certain reasons, I mean the only reason I've ever bought from there is one the first time it was a good deal, and two, the second time is it's a mo- it was a model that no one else stocked, which I think is pretty good reasoning for buying yeah from them. But I mean, let's put it this way though, three thousand toys they do have some good deals, and not to mention the shipping is a hell of a lot faster. Yeah, I, the funny thing is that all the times I've bought online and used UPS, the only time I ever got a UPS delay was when it shipped from DieCastModels.co. The only, t- you know, I've never had a delay from UPS. Well, I, I very recently did have a uh, model pract- uh, in pieces from UPS, even though, well, I don't think it's UPS's fault; it's the sender's fault. Which is your crusher? Yeah. Uh, $520 crusher. Which you were psyched the fuck out of? Yeah. I mean, I would be too, to be honest. For a $500 crusher? Yeah, and got it for 161 with the uh, buyer's premium. Yeah. Oh, by the way, guys, this probably is relevant to absolutely fucking nothing, but my phone battery is at 20%. <laughs> Oh, congratulations. I thought I'd say that since it's so important, I have to get a notification about it. Oh, turn on low power mode or something. Your phone has that? Yeah, it updated to 9 point whatever. Fucking phone. No, my phone's not ancient yet. It's close, but not yet. The update still works on it, so... As long as that works, you know, you got... It actually worked. Okay, so, yeah. I mean, really, there's... What's the worst thing that could possibly happen, to be honest? Uh, explosion? Uh, I, do have phone? A, I do have an iPhone 3. Uh, I don't. Well, I don't use it, for God's sakes, but... Yeah. By the way, guys, if you don't know the theme of k Cup of Joe and you're not a regular listener... Sometimes we don't talk about models the entire time. Sometimes we go off on other topics, but it's fun. Yeah. But uh, we'll probably revert back to Crusher Disaster later on. Oh, that, we should talk about it now. That thing or should we in... go on with the news and then go back to it? That thing came in parts. Parts. Uh, yeah. Um, hey, it, you want to put a picture up? I can send it to you. Uh, oh. we'll put a picture. Um, how the fuck? I don't know. I can't. It's hard to do this during uh shows like this. Not to mention the risk of fucking up the recording. Yeah, true. But but yeah, it pretty much. It's supposed to look like a crusher, but when it came, it had nothing to. It looked nothing like a crusher. It looked like it. it looked, it looked like a scrapyard. It looked more like a half-assembled model kit, to put it that way. Yep. So one of the uh, guides inside the belt was actually <laughs> rattling. Actually, let me backtrack. So I see the box on my doorstep, and I'm like, what the heck? Why is it so freaking small? Well... Because, you see, like if you buy from, say, 3,000 toys or DHS... Uh, they tons have of packing a, peanuts. Yeah, they have a big box with tons of packing peanuts. But no, I open, I pick the box up off my doorstep, and then I hear crash. I'm like, what was that? Sounds like a demolition site. Yeah, probably. It was just like I hear crash, bang. I'm like, oh, well, that so, isn't good. Yeah, I would. I'd say not. Yeah, so I unbox it. And I'm like, I start talking, and then. I noticed that the box basically the box of the crusher basically had no padding whatsoever and the box of the crusher basically was resting on like one or two packing peanuts on the bottom of the box. For all your packing peanut issues. One yeah, so... no peanuts. <sighs> the funny thing is the box is an old box. Uh, the crusher 
is in an old uh, box that it came in uh, from the 1990s. So it said uh, Roger, what's it, Roger Hull, uh, Hiram Construction, which is basically really, really early DHS diecast. Um, yeah. And then it says, oh, yeah, some uh, small, don't be surprised, like some small parts may come off during shipping. Some Easily, small parts. <laughs> small parts. Small parts. And then it says, just affix them with uh, with epoxy or super glue for metal. I open the box, and <laughs> the front part of the uh, crusher that's like right in front of the power module, well, that it's sitting a, about a quarter of an inch higher than it should be. The power module is like jacked up uh, an eighth of an inch. Um, the one of the crush, one of the flaps on the hopper is nowhere to be seen. Yeah. So I sit out and parts fall off, and I see every single one of the handrails is bent. And I did it on video, and let's just say it was pretty disastrous. And like, where did all the other parts go? Oh wait. I take a layer of cardboard out of the box uh, that the model was in, and they're all there, all over the place, crashing and banging. The frame that the cross conveyor hangs on, that was a really mangled mess. Yeah, I mean, this model was really... Do you have the unboxing up yet? No, I didn't upload it yet, but I probably will. Yeah, like, seriously. It's going to be very interesting to see. And I feel bad for the guy because, you know, well, actually, I don't feel bad for the guy. No. Not at all. And, you know, I called him up after the unboxing and I'm like, look, I pay $161 after the premium for the model and, well, paid for various other items. And you charge me $40. For shipping, which on their policy is on the auction company's policy, auction cost fee. So there is no way that even though the box was almost nine pounds, there's no way a box that size would have cost forty to ship via UPS. So yeah. You know what, as in the words of somebody that, you know, does YouTube, oh yeah. baby, you know it, guys. Something screwed up. It's, it's fucked up as a football bat. <laughs> yeah, the box of the model was four and a half inches, um, well, four and a half inches uh, thick. Yeah. And the box that the models all came in was less than six inches thick. So that only left, like, one or two packing peanuts of room. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a flat box. And believe it or not, on the box, it actually said, Sliced Slab Bacon. Yeah. From right something meat company and then it had priority mail stickers all over it and it was being shipped to UPS ground so I'm like the heck yep no. and I found it funny I looked on their policy it says our first priority is to have your new items delivered uh, in perfect condition yeah so I call up the auction company, and the guy's like, uh, yeah, and, I'm, and I told him about the thing. He's like, oh, that's um, not good. Uh, what, what, what did you buy again? And I told him the lot number. He's like, but what was it? I'm like, you don't even know what the lot is? Seriously? Yeah. And, yeah, and I'm like, I told him it's in pieces, and he's like, what? And I'm, I'm like, look, it's in pieces. I spent $161 on it, and you charged me a lot for shipping. And... And it was like, oh, but what would you want to want me to do with it? And I'm like, uh, well, what do you think? You know? Yeah. 
And then he's like, and then after a while, he's like, "Oh, you could either like send, you could send the toy back because that's the only way it's that." It's not uh, a toy. I'm like, yeah, I explained that a couple times, and he was like, "Oh, that's not what I meant. I meant I'm like, no, really." So it's I had to explain to that to him several a times. Model. A toy is meant to be played with outside in the sandbox. A toy is a brooder model. A toy, it, for lack of a better uh, reference, is an Ertl model. <laughs> so I told him that several times. And it's like, oh, but the only way, like, that I would that I would do anything with it is that uh, that we would get our toy back because uh, uh, I don't want to like he doesn't want to lose money or something. He said he would like, oh, you could either like keep it and you fix it yourself if you want and not get any money, or send it back to us and we get our toy back and we fix it ourselves and sell it. So I'm like, really? You mean you? They weren't going to give you your money back. But not all of it. They're obviously not going to refund the shipping or the buyer premium. So I would only get 140 out of 161 plus shipping. And I'd probably have to pay for the return shipping. And they would get to sell the model. So And then make more money. Yeah. I think that was sort of deliberate there, if you think about it. Eh. But you never know. I mean, let's put it this way. Shit happens. Maybe it is UPS's fault. Maybe it's the guy's fault. Maybe he's trying to scam people. You never know. But you, you got the crusher fix, and that's pretty much all that matters. Yeah. I mean, the box literally said that it was fragile and everything, and then they'd say they'd have UPS pack it real good if they thought that everything was fragile and high value, which both applied, but they did. They had their hack jobs pack it in a box that was barely big enough to fit all the models in, with no room to move whatsoever. You know, there there's people that are just there to make money off of this, and there's people like Roy yeah. Ferguson that actually kind of care. Roy yeah, Ferguson. I mean, these uh, these guys, they're people that people trust to auction off uh, properties, like land and like farms and estates. Yeah. So if they can't handle shipping out models or or antiques or anything, I don't even know why they're in the business. Now, here's the thing. DHS, for example, run by Chuck Sword. Everybody knows who Chuck Sword is. Obviously, because, you know, he owns Sword Models, but... And I find this... Like, he actually cares about the modeling business. And he's not there just to make money, but he's also there to give everybody... Um, you know, bring joy to the community by getting great models to people that he actually cares about. Yeah. And also, 3,000 Toys, for example, they also do care about wide variety and they're not a big business they have they have like what three or four people run, running customer service yeah i mean not, most people in this business aren't super big exactly 3000 toys they look massive but they're really not if you put it in retrospect yeah they're based out of Joplin Missouri which was the town that got hit by the tornado i don't even know if they got affected by it or not yeah they did get like one of their uh, rental spaces got uh, messed up so but i mean everyone was fine and they recovered so which is great you know uh and they didn't ja they've been very fair about their prices yeah i mean everything is way below msrp oh yeah and you know their shipping cost is 7.95 but ups and that's a flat rate shipping. Yeah, too. and then so if, if you, you spend more than a certain amount, it's all free. And here's the thing, though: shipping two three sixty five to Sal costs, and the same box that three thousand toys sh shipped it in cost me about seventeen dollars. I think it was. It was either seventeen or twenty seven. I forgot. There was, okay. It was a big number, but for shipping, it was. But it still was really cool that they do that. You know, yes, shipping it could be expensive for, say, something that's like $5. Yeah. Sure, that could be expensive. But think about it this way, though. Most of the things that they sell are not $5 items. They are very no. expensive. And they, and believe it or not, they still got the Mac Granite uh, uh, asphalt distributor. Yeah. Which you can't really find that anymore. True. I think they only have it in black now, but they still do have some sort of items. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, actually, and the never-selling CCM245 front shovel. Oh, yeah. That that seems very... Th you know, I wanted to get to the regular 245, but i given up on it. But I will put it like this, though. Um, 
I would love to see somebody make a 150 scale betting box. That's not like a hundred dollars. They've made. There's been one made before. No, but there there was a trench box made and it was like around the hundred. Oh. Yeah. The closest thing we have is what those skip containers. Or you can have one custom built. I mean. Well, I mean, yeah, but I I don't know. It's just something I don't find myself doing. I would. Well, I mean, I would you lo- could get someone to build it. I mean. I know, but I mean. Yeah. There's so many, exce- you know, people think of the modeling community as just so much as model as just putting the models in and doing a diorama, but so much more. Yeah, you gotta get all the, like, the details. If you want to, if you want it to be a credible thing, you gotta have the details with it. Yep. But you can also get the shuttle lift and the the, the camouflage or the uh, regular shuttle lift or the you can get the regular shuttle lift. And you can also get the military green one. Yeah. But Sword also made a tank. Yeah, but it was like 155th scale. Or something. Yeah, it was 156th, actually. Yeah. But still, they, they 3000 Toys does still have quite a few um, good sword models out there. They still got the Brennan tank, or Brenner tank, or wherever it's called. Oh, yeah. Well, they got one of them. Yeah. Now, here's something I don't get. The, um... The sword... Telestack conveyor is $349. Really? I'm not spending $349. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. But... Still... They're... Yeah. And also, I gotta, I gotta bring this up since, you know, because, yeah. When oh when are we going to see the pickup trucks? Yeah. How long, for the love of Christ, how long have we been waiting? A long time. Oh yeah, definitely. It's been since what, like 2012? Since before? yeah, I think they said it was like 2016 is when they claim they're coming out. Um. When did they promise it? They promised it before TWH collapsed. Yeah. So that was at least before uh, 2013. June 2013. Yeah. I mean, they kept showing the same prototype with the, for lack of a better word, term, cheese wheels. Cheese wheels. <laughs> yeah, because it's just round discs of plastic with no detail on them. It was, and it was just a prototype model, though. It's not really necessarily meant to show the wheels. It was more meant to show the body of it and, what, and give us a good idea of the size and all that. Yep. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, our our esteemed financial correspondent, JJ, his Call of Duty Black Ops 3 character is a female. Or is that just some random character? JJ got boobs. Uh huh. I had well. to. Also, if you don't follow the just the show, I'm the stupid one. Joe's the smart one, so I, I and I have the attention span of a rock at times, right? I guess. <laughs> what the fuck you mean you guess? Well, I mean a rock, I mean it's it's always just there, so I don't know if that's the right term. Well, I mean, you could talk to a rock, but it doesn't reply. Yeah, true. So that's me at times. Do you have a pet rock? That's as fucked as a pet rock pissing on a carpet. Okay. Well, hey, you got fucked as a football bat. I should have pet rock pisses on rug. Oh, so that's like a basketball rink. God damn it! <laughs> Fuck. Just try thinking about playing basketball on ice. I think people have done that before. No, but like a hockey rink with basketball things. Oh, Lord. They're going to ruin another sport. <laughs> Hockey's actually pretty good. I, I, don't, I can't stand basketball for some reason. Basketball on ice. Mainly because my stepdad sits there and talks about it all day. 
and all he'll ever watch on TV is basketball and ESPN. Them basketballs, though. <laughs> Them basket. Never mind. Never mind. Backing up. Before. Oh my god. Basketball on ice. What? It's an actual thing. Oh boy. It's, it looks very. They're wearing helmets. <laughs> Well, anyway. Anyway. Ice hockey and basketball combined. This looks very horrific. It looks, I bet it is. And they're passing it like a football. That? No, they're passing it like an actual football. Okay. It's the mix of three sports. All right. So, anyway, in the end, I got the crusher fixed. I'm like, no, I'm not sending it back. You can go fuck yourself. I'm never buying from you again. I didn't quite say that. I just said, okay, well, I'm not sending it back. I'm fixing it. And he's like, okay. But you're not going to buy it from you're not going to buy from him again. I doubt they're going to have another auction. Mm, true. True. Yeah. Where did you get this stuff anyways? It was like some auction thing online, live auction, and they actually had a live feed. An interesting fact on the pre pre-auction inspection they let you tune in for like the first 20 minutes before the auction and throughout the whole auction but in the first 20 minutes it was just a bunch of old guys walking around some airplane hangar looking thing in nebraska with a bunch of tables models and one guy uh let's just say he had a soda can and once he tried to pop it open it started hissing he was like oh shoot and it started like going everywhere so pretty much and then the guy at the computer was hacking up a storm. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Is there an actual auctioneer? Yeah. So you gotta send me a link to this shit. And then it was super annoying with... Okay, and... Yeah, and it was like... And then whenever an, a bid would come in from the internet, a guy would have to yell... An old guy would have to yell... He'd have to yell, yep, over and over and over again. Yep. Trust me, I know how the auctioning thing works. I actually watched Barrett Jackson. Uh, it's like 30, 35, and then 35, yep. 35, yeah. 40. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know what? I've seen some crazy shit at the auction house. I've seen one guy waving a hanky everywhere. I've seen one guy jumping up and down. This one chick, she'd ask her clients to get up. She'd stand on the chair and start doing jumping jacks. Oh yeah, and they they had the proxy bid guy come in with the uh, with the van, and the guy was just sitting on the computer in the van, and then there was another laptop hooked up to that. Yeah. One thing that I hated the most about the auction was I'd have to keep I'd say insert the bid, then it says submitted bid to auctioneer, and then it say bid not accepted. I'm like, what the heck? And I'd have to keep spamming the click, clicking the amount just to make sure my number would get in. Is it really so essentially, the thing is, when you're bidding on live auctions online, your rights are much less than the rights of those on site. On site bidders get to retract their bids, which ends up in screwing you out of a model because when they retract a bid, you, you don't always have time to put your bid in again. Because, say, they have a lower bid of 40 and you have the $45 bid, someone pulls out the bid, the whole tower comes crashing down back to the number it was before. So it go back to 40 and you won't have time to put in. Your forty-five dollar bid. But I will say this though: you gotta send me this website if you still remember it. All right. Like seriously, I would love yeah. to see this. It was an ended auction, and I'm not even sure when the next another auctions come up. But you'll be watching for sure, won't you? Yeah, you just have to keep stalking the website every couple of days. There's a there's a really good deals on there. Yeah, if you if an auction comes up, that's the thing. Yeah. So if one actually comes up. It it's not Beezid, is it? What? Beezid? No, it's like an actual auction company. But then here's the here's another downside. They get to charge you anywhere from ten percent and up. So DHS auction charges you eighteen percent, this guy charged fifteen percent, and someone could charge you more if they wanted to. Oh and the bidding increments uh change by amount. So say I think if it's under 70 or something, it's by 5 bucks, And anywhere over that, it's like 10 And then it goes 15 20 25 
yeah, it's exponential bidding amounts, which is annoying. And the shipping, despite the weight of the item, it's value based. So if you spent like a lot of money on a small item, you're still going to pay a lot for shipping. Yeah. So, I mean, you just got to watch the terms of the sale and you got to pay attention or else you're going to end up paying a lot more than you bargained for. Wow. Yeah, you, you've got to really be careful in the auctions because once the hammer drops, they get to charge your credit card. Which sucks. Yeah. Anyway. Man, Beezid doesn't have anything. No, it's not Beezid. No, I'm talking about, I like checking it. By the way, Joe, you have a text. What? Joe, your phone is ringing. Oh, I entered the password wrong. Oh. Use a, your fingerprint scanner. I don't have a fingerprint scanner. Dang it. Then what type of phone do you have? Remember, I just have a five. What the hell? Yeah. That's like 2012. Yeah. And it still runs like it's brand new, so... That's because it practically is. Okay. Well, I mean, you've only had it for a short period of time, though. No, I, I've had it... Well, I mean, I've had it for a, almost a year, but still. Does that have some dents and scratches? No. Really? Oh, yeah, you keep yours in a case. Yeah. Man. All right, so anyway... Diecast Masters, back to the news. They're having a D11T in wow. a special copper-plated finish that's rubbed to create depth and, you know, a bit of a, you know, like a uh, effect to it. Yeah. Like a vintage effect. Uh, they copper-plated it and rubbed it and probably gave it like a wash of some sort. Yeah. It looks really nice. Even the plastic parts are plated in copper. And it looks like a fucking penny. <laughs> yeah. At least this thing is not worth a penny, though. It's worth a ton more. So, say about 10,000 pennies? Uh, there, I don't think there's a price released yet, but it's it's presented in a special mirrored what package with a mirrored base it's like a display box and they are suggesting people use it as a uh, gift for like retirement presents or something here you go bob or like uh anniversary you know for working at the company hey joe <laughs> what uh, um so buddy you've been with us for quite some time uh what you've been with model news for quite some time Okay. And if he's right next to me, I put my arm around your shoulder. So, <laughs> um, here we have a little present for you. Here's your D11. You're fired. So that would be an interesting uh, that would usage. definitely be an interesting usage. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, there's a nice D11T variation coming out. It doesn't look cheap, but it's nice. Yes. And also. Diecast Masters, they're releasing a 1 125th scale cat 793F. Why 1 125th scale? Why the heck are you choosing that scale? I'm sorry, but I have to just criticize this. It looks great, but seriously, 1 125th scale? And they claim they picked that scale because they wanted to achieve a model size that fits within quote-unquote general HO or 187th scale scheme, and they claim at 187th scale the 793F would have been larger than many of the 150th scale models that they would produce. But really, if you're going to produce something Are that's... Are they producing skid steers? Holy fuck! What? Really? I mean, are they... Are they... It'd be much larger than some of their 150th scale counterparts. Do well, anyway... Uh, what the fuck is this about? What? Anyway, 1 125th scale is nowhere close to 187th scale. 
I mean, you take a 140th scale model and put it next to a 150th scale model, and say it's a 20 ton excavator and 140th scale, it comes, it's around the size of a 150th scale uh, 40 ton. So, yeah. So it'd be about, it, it'd be about a 450 size. Yeah, so put that the other way, and think of a 1 100th scale model next to a 1... 87th, and then, you know, then put the 1 125th scale, and they get exponentially smaller. I don't get some people's rationale behind some of the things they do. Yeah, I mean, really, it's a 793F. It's supposed to be big, impressive, and imposing. So why are you trying to purposely shrink it down to fit into a box? You're not Matchbox or Hot Wheels here. Do your job and produce accurate scale models that are actually to scale. Which they advertise the best models on the market. I guess. And that makes me think of uh, my f slightly furious uh, issue with the quote-unquote 187 scale New Holland E485B by Hobby and Work. The thing was the size of a 187 scale 20-ton uh, machine. And I don't know... Body panels actually snap off when you disassemble the model, and they switch them out to uh, produce the 20-ton machine. So I'm like, really? Wait, wait, wait. What scale is it? They claim it's 187 scale, but I think it's in the hundreds. And they just swap out the body panels. Uh, the counterweight is the same. They just swap out the body panels to make it a 20-ton machine and put a new cab on it. It's bigger. I don't get a lot of people's rationale, like I said. Behind some of the shit they do, because they are just... Some people are just fucking idiots. Yeah. I mean, but really, at least Diecast Masters is actually the state scale it is, instead of just claiming a scale. Yeah, and... But I'm still not happy about 1 125th scale. I mean, it's just gonna look so small and awkward compared to other now, 187th scale equipment. Didn't Toy State do the exact same thing? Yeah, they did, what was it, 1 101 scale or something. Yeah, they did with a 797F. So I mean, really, they're probably going to be like very similar. I'm actually the Toy State's going to be bigger, and it costs fifteen dollars, which is eh okay. But you're talking about what a thirty, forty, fifty dollar model? Really? I'm thinking this thing is probably going to be around fifty or sixty, maybe. Oh boy, you can pick you can pick them Toy State things up in your local Walmart. Yeah, I mean, anyway, I, I'm just not happy about, and no one's happy about the scale that they chose. I mean, I looked around in 187 scale groups, and not one person was happy. And they said they're going to have to produce 187 scale eventually. Like Tonkin did. Yeah, well, Tonkin, I'm going to get into this a little bit. Tonkin, well, they just did a couple, a slew of couple loaders, which were basically the same thing retooled. Yep. For minor detail and new decals. And after that, they basically hung 187 scale out to dry and never produced anything that they promised. Keyword promised. Yeah. They promised like 390s and like forestry equipment and everything that would have been produced in 150th scale. But nothing was ever done besides the loaders. So hopefully Diecast Masters actually gets what people want and produces actual 187 scale models, not 1 125th scale models. I will say this, though. There is a lot of interest in the construction community for 150th scale. I mean, that's the premier scale. Yeah. Not many, like, what, is most train layouts in 187th? Yeah, yeah but, but then, then there's also people that still like to collect and model the uh, 187 scale trucks and equipment. Yeah. Oh, yeah, certainly. Now, here's the thing, though. Why yeah. can't now here? I was bringing up, you know, you can buy the Toy State stuff at Walmart and stuff. Why can't we have? Why can't some people get over it themselves, make deals with like Walmart and whatever, and say Diecast Masters for example? Why can't they make a deal with Walmart, produce some lower quality models, like and the uh... sell them at Walmart? It'd be great for some of the newer collectors that don't want to waste the money and pay for shipping and all that stuff from retailers. And they can just go out to their Walmart whenever. Kind of like what uh, North Scott did with the 164, 611, 988, 775, and uh, 385. And what Ertl did 
many with years like ago. the D ten, D three fifty, D D no, uh, nine eighty eight B. And what they did with the John Deere stuff, you had the series yeah. of generic stuff, even the back of which were the exact same, just missing one decal, saying what number it was. Yeah. But I mean, I don't, th- I don't even know what Cat would allow for this stuff. They kind of like a premium price for not the most detailed models. But still, though, it'd be a great marketing thing because you get more people wanting to buy them and more people into it. Yeah. Why do you think I... St- what do you think I have a lot of, or what, what do you think most of my John Deere models are going to be raised up? Uh, Those generic ones. I got the loader, the grader, the dozer, the backo. I think that was the, all there was, wasn't there? Yeah. That's, and that's the four I got. And I have the 850 and I have the 650 and that's the only John Deere models I have. Six and four out of the six of them are those generic ones. Be, you mm-hmm. know why? Be, because I bought them at Walmart. And then we're talking like 2008 and 2009 when these were available. Walmart. Yeah, uh, they just did them after like 2011 or 12. Which is sad. Very sad. Then you had these plastic series, which is yep. which was sad enough. You get those little excavators. That don't even have proper linkage. Now, they did have some diecast ones that were in 164 scale and didn't have proper linkage. And also very, very terrible tracks, I might add. Oh, yeah. But they were still nice. I mean, that was, that was those little diecast ones without with the terrible tracks was my first model in 2005, which is some 10 years ago. Yeah. And that really, that still counts as a model, so I've been collecting ever since then, in theoretical terms. Yeah. All right, so actually, Diecast Masters, they're saying that their first production markets will enter the market in 2016, and they're not going to sell directly to consumers, but they're going to be selling through a network of distributors. So I believe, what, 3000 Toys is the distributor for Diecast Masters in uh, the U.S.? I hope so. Yeah, I mean, what what DHS had the distri- distribution rights to Tonkin in the U.S. and let's just say things went a little less than desired. Oh yeah, I mean you were getting you were getting people on eBay that had the models in hand on the U.S. way before DHS would even get them in stock, and I think DHS would purposely make sure that other dealers wouldn't get them after. Wouldn't get them before they got them. Like 3,000 toys and all their Yeah, you're still waiting on certain 3,000 toys uh, sold uh, Tonkin models to even come in stock. Are you saying like I am? Well, I mean, I looked on uh, 3,000 toys the other day, and it seems like most of the Tonkin models are completely out of stock. And here's the thing, though. And they've been, a lot of them have been on pre-order since they came out. And here's the thing, though. I'm still waiting on my 627s. Yeah. And here's what I did when the uh, 27 scale 966 and 972Ks were coming out. They were scheduled originally for, I think it was October and November 2014, 2013 or 14, uh, 13 or 14 release. And then... They just kept getting pushed out more and more and more. And then, I believe it was in April, I went to, like, a hobby shop, went went and bought one for, like, $22, reviewed it, and they were still not in stock at 3,000 toys. Wow. Yeah, I waited, like, a couple months and got it, and it was still not in stock there, so. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah. Guys, I want to talk about a new show that we're going to have coming out here within the next month or so. It's called K and K in the Morning. Ooh. <laughs> Me and Kevin Trent are going to sit down. We're going to actually do... That's going to be uploaded on Podcast One eventually as well. Like all of our episodes will eventually. But K and K in the Morning is going to be a uh, two times a week show every Monday and Wednesday. Where we just sit down and we just talk and... It, it's not necessarily going to be about models all the time. It's going to just be like Diesel just blown off shit or whatever. Like the last episode was about Patrick. 
other interesting. Cam- other cameras show my say, but K and K in the morning. The new show. Yeah. It, it's it's a show where I don't have to be intelligent to look the smartest. I shouldn't have said that, should I? <laughs> anyways, guys, um I'm gonna say this rice krispies are tasting awesome right now. Okay. Nice. Well, I mean, when you're doing these shows, you do get bored at times. And you also get very hungry and thirsty. Mm. Suddenly, I see myself with nothing to eat. But anyways, guys, um, don't you have, like, a MacBook, Joe? No. No, yeah, I thought you did. I don't. How, how come I can imagine you having a MacBook? I don't know. Oh, yeah, an Ertl 1050K. Oh, wow. Yeah. May 2016. The good old month of May. The early month of May. The 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 month we're in the in the only month in the year where I'm extremely irritable. In the early month of May. You know why I get irritable in the month of May? I don't know. Indy five hundred. Oh. Literally I live about two miles from the track. Holy fuck. Yeah. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., all you hear is meow, meow, meow. Oh, <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, and the best part is when you hear, eh, boom. <laughs> you know something happened. Oh, fuck, he's in the air. He's crashing uncontrolled. Oh, fuck, it's going to be quiet for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. That's that right there. Is awesome. Now I hope <laughs> the driver's okay, but thank you for crashing. I get some silent time finally. And you also hope for rain. Rain. Remember the old saying, uh, "April showers bring May flowers." Yeah. Reverse that. Fuck it. Let it r- rain in May. Now the Indy 500 day is the worst. Traffic for fucking. Miles. Holy fuck, man. Mm-hmm. And then all you hear is, Woo! Woo! Heel! Heel! Woo! Heel! Heel! Woo! Oh, boy. Ew. Holy fuck, would you shut up already? How long does it take for you to go 200 miles? Or 200 laps? Mm-hmm. Apparently a long time. And then afterwards, all you hear is, Woo! He won! Oh my god, woo! Woo! And then you hear blimps. And then then helicopters. Oh, wait. It gets really fucking annoying really fast. (laughs) That's the month of May, everybody. Nobody gives a fuck about NASCAR around here, so we don't have that problem. Well, I guess Brandon's story does. I mean, Crane Dude. Oh. NASCAR. Oh, and Tommy. Oops. Now, hold on. He told me not to say his last name. So don't say it then. Solution. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Right down Santa Claus. Yeah, down. so I like walk into this <laughs> place today and then I'm like, what? Christmas tree? What? Wreaths? What? Christmas lights? I swear, corporate Christmas begins the second Halloween ends. Actually, it begins the day Halloween begins. Oh, fair enough. Like, right now, a local hobby shop's already having their um, Black Friday sale. Yeah, a lot of places Black Friday sales already. It seems like Thanksgiving is pushed up to November, or October 27th. <laughs> what, are you riding on a Canadian Thanksgiving here? No, that's true. Oh, yeah, guess who's not going anywhere on Black Friday? Who? 
I'm probably not going anywhere because I don't want to. Oh, neither do I. Yep. Black Friday is just a sham to get a lot of people's money at one time. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, still, there is good deals. Maybe. That's that's questionable. It depends on where you go. Yeah. Oh, and then there's the parade. Oh, wait, that's Thanksgiving. Never mind. Yeah. Now, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The official first appearance of so-called Santa Claus. Mm, well, it's basically already happened at a lot of places, so oops. By the way... For all you kids that still believe in Santa, it's really your parents. Really, Kevin? <laughs> Merry Christmas. So that model new Santa Claus that Patrick was talking about, I, Patrick or somebody, he doesn't exist. He's just, well, me. Uh, question mark. Do I have a white beard? Am I fat? Let me, uh, let me rephrase that. Do I have a white beard? No. The fat part's kind of obvious because I'm sitting here eating Rice Krispies out of the box with a spoon. Ah. Uh. So you know how it is. Yeah. You see, guys, this is what I'm reduced to. Mm. It's going to be a whole lot worse during the 24 because every hour I'm going to have a different meal. <laughs> yeah, and then you. Sh another thing is like you just see someone with that has like a rare model, and then they were like talking to you about it, and then they start. You know, they just like, oh yeah, we not sell it, and then they're just like waving it around. You motherfucker! <laughs> I see. I mean, he sold them his uh, two or two seventy twos. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, and then, well, he he just is possibly selling the 870 and the 450. And that Zaxxas, um... Fuck, I don't know what it is. It's the wheeled excavator. The 170W. Well, he already told me that would be the last thing he would sell, so... I can see why. Yeah, because a bunch of people told him it was much rarer, but, I mean, I'm... Probably the only one telling him the truth. Yeah. And Joe does not lie, ladies and gentlemen. Joe never lies. Well, I wouldn't say never, but not often. I try. At least I try. He doesn't lie, people. Now, I do, but he doesn't. And there's a lot of people, like, uh, kind of irritating him with a bunch of lowball offers. Now, here's the thing, though. I'm like Pinocchio. Every time I tell a lie, my nose doesn't get bigger. My belly does. <clears throat> so. I don't know. And Joe gets smarter every time. Ah. Actually, every day he gets smarter, it seems. <sighs> I talked to somebody, a former Model News member, the other day. Mm -hmm. Mr. M and Earth Movers, former Model News member since 2013. Good guy, he is. So yeah, just I mentioned that. Okay. But anyways, uh, yeah, guys. So we better, we about ready to wrap this up. Yeah, just about. Just about. Well, anyway, uh. We've uh, done some work to the website. We're adding things just about every day or as soon as we get news in. Yep, and Instagram, of course. Yep. By the way, um, I want to say welcome to the newest news page on Instagram over there. What is it, like miniature diecast announcements or whatever? Something of that nature. Yeah, welcome to the market. Uh, jungle. Welcome to the jungle. and hee 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 hee. Yeah. Whatever. Um, again, guys, so, let's wrap. so pretty much we hope you enjoyed this episode of Cake. Um, I'm trying to get a guest on here for next week. And I'll throw this off.
YouTube guys across YouTube. Yep. And um, so pretty much, guys, uh, I'm Kevin. Yeah, and I'm Joe. He doesn't normally say his name. I'm Kevin. That's Joe. Please spare a thought for France. It doesn't have to be right now, but whenever you get the opportunity, say a prayer for the people over there in Paris and, you know, keep them in our thoughts and prayers as we go on through the week. And thanks a lot, guys, and fuck ISIS. All right. That's it? Yeah. Ah, man, that was a great episode, man. Yeah. Really was. You know what I'm gonna do next? What? Probably just sit here and do absolutely fucking lootly nothing. There's a 966 of that. Oh fuck! I'm still recording. See you guys. Peace yeah. out. Peace. Out. Or whatever. Peace out.